hello again everyone uh, welcome uh, to our uh, web meeting uh, presentations uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about a uh, hot topic which is the management of uh, UVA cataract I'm not going to talk about the UVI's management but when it is stabilized for the cataract uh, removal in cases of UVI's how uh, you think about and how you uh, deal with this case in the proper management to reach the proper uh, final conduct cataract formation is an especially common complication resulting from uveitis it's a rare in posterior uveitis but occurs in about 50% of patients with anterior and intermediate uveitis and in nearly 80% of patients with Fuchs heterochromic iridocyclites. During the duration and the intensity of inflammation and treatment, for example, the corticosteroid, the previous vitrectomy, and the critical are critical. Uh, determined for cataract formation. Compared with the general population, cataract formation occurs at an earlier age in cases of uveitis patients. In cataract formation in uveitis, there is a many uh, things to deal with. Posterior synechia which are often seen with focal areas of anterior capsular necrosis and the underlying lens opacities. Fibrin membranes overlying the lens are often accompanied by an opacification under the anterior capsule. In rare cases, an anterior subcapsular opacity can be observed primarily. There are many theories in the cataract formation in uveitis. Inflammatory stimuli or degeneration might induce proliferation of the lens epithelial cells. These abnormal cells produce an extracellular basal membrane material and extracellular matrix before they degenerate in combination with their surrounding lens fibers. There is an important title called the uveal biocompatibility, which is the breakdown of the blood aqueous barrier, which is the first striking event during or directly after surgery. The average time to reestablish the blood aqueous barrier is about three months. So, this is the important time to stabilize the uveitis. The increase of cells and cytokines in the anterior chamber influence the degree of uveal and also of the capsular biocompatibility. In uveal biocompatibility, there is some degree of foreign body reaction occurs in all eyes after cataract surgery in order to clear the depress from the IOL surface, which is the reaction uh, we, all, we all see after cataract surgery in uveitis. The aqueous humor in the uveitis patients after cataract surgery show abundance of macrophages. Another title called the capsular biocompatibility which is different than the uveal biocompatibility. It's characterized by the lens epithelial cells migration by anterior capsular opacification and posterior capsular opacification. The fibronectin in, is responsible for the IOL attachment to the capsular back. This bioactive bond between the lens and the capsule may reduce lens epithelial cell migration being one reason for the lower of the PCO.
four different uh, important types, which is the main uh, one, of, uh, the four main uh, causes, which I'm going to stress on this uh, presentation, uh, are the Fox-Juvia's syndrome, the juvenile idiopathic arthritis associated with uh, uvitis, Bechet disease, and the Fox-Kanegi-Harada syndrome. We're going to start by the Fuchsifia syndrome. We're going to, uh, to say uh, important uh, uh, items about it in uveitis with cataract. The average instance of cataract in Fuchsifia syndrome is around 50%, from 15 to 75%. Eyes with Fuchs have better visual prognosis compared to other types of uveitis with 92% achieving best corrected visual acuity of 2040 or better after cataract surgery if the inflammation is well controlled. Good to know that good visual outcome in Fuchs can be attributed to the low-grade inflammation that predominantly affects the anterior segment. And glaucoma is the most visually significant complications where permanent elevation of the IOP develops in 30% to 35%. This is a very important issue. The second uh, cause of uveitis is juvenile idiopathic uh, uh, arthritis associated with uveitis. The cataract extraction is associated with more severe complications and persistent intraocular pressure. This is the so aggressive uh, cause of uveitis. Uveitis have a marked tendency to form cyanitic implantation of posterior uh, and plantation of a posterior chamber at the time of cataract surgery often result in posterior cyanitia reforming if the uveitis is not adequately controlled. So we do not recommend to implant during the cataract surgery in these cases because the inflammation is highly aggressive. The pupil distortion, the IOL displacement, the seclusio and the occlusio pupillae may cause a malignant glaucoma postoperative, in which the surgical peripheridectomy and the capsulotomy are needed to relieve this pupillary block. The glaucoma occurs in about 25% of the juvenile idiopathic arthritis associated with uveitis. Some eyes develop hypotony due to the traction of the ciliary body and it's a process on the cyclitic membrane. The third cause of uveitis is Bichette disease. Different, the cataract here occurs in about 17 to 30 percent the visual prognosis is significantly worse, not because of the anterior segment, but because of the severe posterior segment complications, mainly the optic atrophy, the inflammatory macular degeneration, and macular edema, which is commonly to happen postoperatively. The most frequent complication is the posterior capsular ossification, the PCO, which is about 37.7.5% of the cases. I'm going to uh, uh, give a video uh, in, the, in the presentation how to deal with the case of Bechet disease in the cataract surgery. The force is the vogt kanegi harada syndrome. The cataract is the most common complication in vogt kanegi harada syndrome with a prevalence of about 40% and account for 25% of the visual loss, different than the patients. Patients with vogt kanegi harada syndrome achieve good visual outcome with the cataract surgery. The main visual threatening in the vogt kanegi harada syndrome are the subretinal gliosis and the optic atrophy. Cystoid macular edema is uncommon against what happened in Bechet disease. It, and it's possibly a complication of cataract surgery rather than the vogt kanegi harada syndrome. The posterior capsule ossification is highly uh, common, occurs in 58 to 76 percent 
if which 42% to 45% require YAG laser capsulotomy. In these cases, the very important issue is counseling the patient for a uveitic cataract surgery. This is not the usual and common cataract surgery. It's a cataract surgery with a lot of complications and the patient has a systemic complications affecting his eye condition. So the, ma the management uh, the patient expectation is very important regarding to the visual prognosis, especially if the disease involves the posterior surgery. Also, you should tell the patient that there is a general risk of cataract surgery and it is necessary to emphasize that the surgery could be more complicated with a prolonged surgical duration due to the abnormal anatomy of the eye. Also, you should insist on significant post-operative inflammation that can usually happen in these patients which is delaying the visual recovery and the need for compliance with immunosuppressive medications and frequent follow-up. Is all cataract surgery with dice you should uh, interfere? No, there is an indication for the cataract surgery in uveitic patients. The major cause for surgery is mostly poor vision. However, the contribution of cataract to visual deterioration must be distinguished from other factors, such as vitrites that decrease the vision, cystoid macular edema, or amblyopia in children. The fundus exploration may be impaired due to the cataract, so it may, may be an important uh, factor to remove the cataract so we can manage with the uh, posterior segment. Cataract extraction may be indicated to judge the abnormalities that are critical for the configuration of the treatment plan. For example, for the cystoid macular edema, for the new vascularization of the retinal uh, vessels due to the ischemia of the posterior segment, the formation of choroidal vascular membranes, or in case of traction or, abs or uh, absolute uh, retinal detachment or, or uveal uh, effusions. Is there any indications other than this for cataract surgery? Yes, vitreous or macular surgery may be necessary, but it may not be safely performed because of the dense cataract. In rare cases of phaco uh, antigenic uveitis, in which the leakage of the lens proteins in the cataract causes the inflammation, so the removal of the lens cures the uveitis. We talked about the indications, so now we come to the contraindication for a cataract surgery. The presence of active inflammation in the anterior chamber is an absolute contraindication against the operation. Never ever to do a cataract operation in the severe active uveitis in this patient. You must stabilize the uveitis first, then you can take uh, the procedure for cataract surgery. Also, for young patient age relatively with a good vision, don't go for a cataract surgery because the advantage of accommodation must be considered. Another title, when we can take the decision for the surgery, the perfect time. Most uh, authorities agree uh, to, uh, to the notation that the complete coescence of the inflammation, which is 10 cells or less in the slit lamp high power field in the anterior chamber must be first uh, obtained before the cataract surgery can be planned. Secondly, at least eight weeks of remission of the inflammation before surgery are commonly recommended. 
The third point, the low intraocular pressure cells in the vitreous and thickening of the choroid may also demonstrate the ongoing inflammation. So if you see this, the low intraocular pressure, which is active inflammation, this is a ciliary shutdown, or cells in the vitreous, or thickening of the choroid, stop, don't go for surgery unless you cure these uh, three topics. Before surgery, an anti-inflammatory medication should be given. Anti-inflammatory medication is a commonly instituted prior to the sur surgical intervention. Usually, the application of topical steroids such as the prednisolone acetate 1% or dexamethasone 0.1% five times daily for a week, in addition to the individual treatment regimen, is greatly is generally uh, sufficient. The transeptal injection of dexamethasone 4 mg or triamcinol acetonide 40 mg may also be used in patients with a known high degree of post-operative fibrin formation. It's a very important uh, uh, topic that when you do a cataract surgery in uvitic patients, before you finish the operation, you should inject subtenon uh, steroid to decrease the incidence of inflammation in the first three weeks post-operatively. Continuing the preoperative anti-inflammatory medication, a systemic corticosteroid application is indicated in selected cases with a previous or current cystoid macular edema, with intermediate or posterior rights, or with known attacks of severe inflammation after previous intraocular surgery. Prednisolone 1 mg per kilogram body weight given for three days or intravenous methyl prednisolone injection on the day before surgery may be effective. Endogenous uveitis with a devastating chronic course with vision-threatening complications should be set on immunosuppression in advance. Must be given one to three months before they achieve sufficient anti-inflammatory effect. Very important that the glaucoma should be stabilized before surgery, never ever to go to surgery with a very high uncontrolled intraocular pressure. So uh, th this, this issue, uh, you should, before you deal with the, this, these patients, you should uh, go with the uh, uveitic uh, uh, internal medicine that uh, dealing with the inflammation of the body. So it's a cooperation between you and the uveitic uh, doctors, which is specialized in the treatment uh, and stabilizing the uveitis in these patients. I will give some rules and tips for the surgery in cataract with uveitis. First, general anesthesia may be chosen for children or cases with surgically challenging condition that you are going to have for long time dealing. Second point, phacoemulsification with in the bag IOL implantation should be performed surgical technique for a majority of uvitic patient, not choose extra capsular cataract extraction or even intracapsular. Third point, small incisions induced the low grade inflammation then longer incisions. Fourth point, an intact, well-centered capsular excess that overlies the optic edge reduces the development of capsular fibrosis. Because the, 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 main, the main inflammation is between the iris and the anterior edge of the capsule. So if you do a small capsular excess, so you are decreasing the size of the pupil with maintaining the pupillary block. But if you do a good size of the rexus, as we are going to see in our videos, so this will going to give the patient a good post-operative uh, state of the eye with the least inflammation. We should choose, we should choose the IOL material and design 
the IOL implanted is burned out the vites, intermediate vites, sarcoidosis, uh, uh, inactive uh, infection vites, and in indigenous posterior vites. This the IOL can do this. So the the IOLs should not be implanted as a routine in patients with juvenile idiopathic uh, arthritis. The inuvitic patient, the bag must be fixated inside the bag, never ever in the sulcus, and uh, should never do the iris clue IOLs in these cases. This is a highly con uh, contraindicated. To reduce the PCO rate and postoperative inflammation and cell deposition, a hydrophobic, a cleric, and PMMA IOLs in uveitic eyes. Don't go ever for hydrophilic lenses that induces more inflammation postoperatively. Also, the sharp edge design may delay the PCO development in uveitic eyes. So what are the uh, com uh, post-operative complications, uh, intraoperative complications that we have to manage? The band keratopathy, the anterior synechia, the posterior synechia. The band keratopathy with the additive treatment, the anterior uh, synechia, which is uh, straight with rubiose hyalysis. With a blunted section, we can do it, injection of a visco, uh, a viscoelastic uh, device, uh, materials, to, uh, to remove this anterior synechia. The posterior synechia is present in 80% of uveitic patients and uh, should, should be done by the high viscoelastic uh, removal by spatula, blunt spatula, we're going to see in the videos, and firmly uh, to remove the firmly fixed adhesions. Continuing the intraoperative complications, hyphema, which is a very important uh, expected as in uveitic vessels, uh, which is located in the chamber angle, the pupil motion. Accidental, we can uh, happen during the fecal emulsification, uh, and if you have to manage, very easily to inject a viscoelastic uh, substance and to increase the intraocular pressure, and wait for some time or elevate also the bottle to, inc to increase the intraocular pressure and wait for some time the bleeding will going to stop. Never ever to do washing, more washing, because more washing of the anterior chamber is going to go more bleeding. So the trick is inject a high visit high viscoelastic in the anterior chamber and wait for uh, clotting and, or to elevate the intraocular pressure for some time. Also, it's very important if you are see the bleeding point, you can do a wet field cautery, which is sometimes required. What are the typical post-operative complications? Long-term maintenance with a topical steroid, very important, may be required to, to reduce the IOL cell deposition and reduce inflammation, very important. And also, the stoic macular edema is very common to occur within the first post-operative weeks after cataract surgery in uveitic patient and must be treated aggressively with corticosteroid and acetazolamide. In this video, we are going uh, to talk, this is a glaucoma post, uh, before, and it has uh, inuvitic patients, and now it has a severe anterior synechia and posterior synechia. So with high viscoelastic uh, viscoat, I'm uh, removing the anterior synechia first, <clears throat> then injecting a high viscoelastic under the iris, trying uh, to find a plane uh, between uh, the iris and the anterior lens capsule. Once you find this plane with the blunt spatula, you are going to remove the synechia by sw sweeping the cannula. It's going to 
uh, open the uh, 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 remove the cyanic and from the other side of the paracentesis you are going to do uh, the same injecting more then i do the 2.4 injection very important issue is to remove this membrane at the edge of the iris and from how do you know this you are removed it when you see a small particular hemorrhages at the edges of the pupillar pupil at this point you have removed all the like this all the membrane <coughs> Then injecting viscoelastic, I'm using in this case the eye ring from uh, Vestic, the BVI. It's it's very soft and it's a silicon uh, like material, so does not harm the uh, the pupil. It's very easy to be inserted. <coughs> It's like the Malugan ring, but it's more softer. So give me the a good size of the pupil, which is very important because to do the rexus, this is a very important issue in these cases. A good size with well-centered circular capsule rexus. So you start slowly. You are fashioning in these cases the anterior uh, rexus. In these cases, you are fashioning the rexus. Don't be hurry in these cases. So, because the main <clears throat> uh, uh, success of these operations in cataract uveitis is to do a good side of the rexus. This is the usual phaco as it is with this big pupil. It's very shallow anterior chamber in these glaucoma patients. So take your time because uh, the cataract in these cases is different because it is little bit uh, fibrous and the inflammation and adhesion between the lens proteins and the anterior capsule is uh, uh, is more than usual. So you are going to do it slowly, slowly, because you don't want to uh, endanger the posterior capsule in all cases of uh, uveitis. It's very easy that you do the cataract in these cases and see how the eye ring maintaining the pupil size and the maintenance of the anterior chamber, which is very important to use machines that uh, maintain the IOP pressure in these uh, cases. After you finish, very important to remove all the cortex because any remnant of the cortex in the bag uh, can be the cause of more inflammation inside the eye. So you are removing, polishing of the posterior capsule, very important. And you see the size of the rexus is a good size uh, for uh, the eye. Uh, it's not small, not, not large, so display the, uh, uh, the intraocular lenses. So in these cases, we maintain the uh, intraocular pressure by uh, uh, injecting the viscoelastic. And, you, and uh, very important that single piece hydrophobic inside the eye, uh, inside the bag, very important. After you finish this, you remove this eye ring very easily. It's a very uh, uh, nice uh, uh, tool I used uh, usually in small pupils when I need a good size of the pupil. And very important to remove the viscoelastic under the IOL to decrease the post-operative inflammation post-operatively. You finish, you do the hydration for the eye very easy and uh, injection, as I said, uh, uh, subtenon steroid. And this is how the eye looks uh, one week after surgery in the upper left and two weeks post uh, surgery in the upper right. Uh, and this is the other eye, I did it, but using the Melune ring instead of the eye ring. And these are the both eyes I used in the same patients. And this is how I follow the patient with the photo slit lamps. And this is another case of Bechet disease. Uh, 
uh, with cataract formation and posterior synechia and fibrous anterior capsule. So as usual, we with the blunt cannula with the viscoelastic and find the plane between the iris and the anterior capsule. With the capsule excess force, I can remove this membrane making the posterior synechia very slowly to remove without uh, attraction on the iris with more inflammation. It's not an easy, it's removal small, uh, bit by bit. Very important to ensure that you remove all the membrane because if you are removing all the membrane, you are going to uh, remove all the posterior synechia. With a small scissor, micro scissor, you can, if you cannot remove it, you can cut it with a small scissor. With bi manual stretching of the iris, I was hoping to have a good size of the pupil, but not, so I used in these cases the Malugan ring. It's a very nice tool also uh, that you stretch the pupil and have a good size of the pupil, maintaining it to maintain a good size of the axis. I do staining in these cases because you should do the, you see, see the capsule. As you see, the capsule is highly fibrotic. So it's very important to do a good size rexus as we said. So slowly with the needle, I couldn't open with the capsule rexus force, I opened with the needle and at every area of this radial uh, wrinkling, you can extend the rexus. So slowly you can good, have a good size rexus, don't be hurry, you need a good size of the rexus, slowly bit by bit you can do it, but take care of the extension in these cases. This is a challenging rexus in these cases, but you always do it and with some traction to the center, you, with the ripping and shading you can do it. Remove the cataract as usual, but suddenly I faced with this, a complete sheet of the PCO on the posterior capsule. It's very important to remove this sheet. How to do it? Polish, polish, polish. Then you find, then, then you find a plane between this sheet and the posterior capsule. Now I found the plane. With the irrigation or the aspiration, you can go under, you remove it bit by bit. You can very strong it's not uh, easy to be opened but you should polish all these cells because remaining of these cells is uh, going to do more inflammation and it's going to make you do the post year laser early and we, do, we, do, we, 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 we usually postpone the post year laser as much as we can in aerobatic patients so good polish take your time to polish all the posterior capsule give the patient post-operative good signs. More polish, more polish, you are going to have it and it's not, an, it's not difficult to polish it like this. It's just high magnification with a good microscope and good focus, you can do all this. So I polish all the posterior capsule, injecting uh, the viscoelastic and get, uh, putting a single piece uh, hydrophobic acleric inside the bag. hydration and then injection of dexa uh, steroid subtenum. So my take home message is any IOL material may be lead to foreign body reaction. Uveal bio compatibility influences the degree of cell deposition on the IOL. Capsular biomechanicability influences the opacification of the anterior and the posterior capsule. Careful patient selection is important for surgical success. Preoperative evaluation is mandatory in order to specify the etiology of uveitis. The presence of active inflammation is a contraindication to surgery.
Patients with devastating chronic course of uveitis with uh, vision threatening complication should be set on immunosuppression uh, in advance. The glaucoma must be stabilized before surgery. At least eight weeks of remission of inflammation are required before surgery. The experience of ocular attacks during the previous course may indicate the post-operative course of uveitis. Application of topical prednisolone acetate 1% five times daily for a week in addition to the individual treatment regimen is generally sufficient. And it is very important to remember that uveitis is a wild card when it comes to cataract surgery but attention to detail a traumatic surgery a non-appropriate and inappropriate anti-inflammatory regimen can greatly increase the odds of success thank you so much and uh, looking forward after uh, the era of uh, 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 the coronavirus uh, recovered the COVID-19. Uh, see you soon in our lovely uh, country, uh, Egypt. See you soon. Thank you.